Hello everyone. A little bit later than planned, um, I'm now going to talk to you about the poems on pinks um, from a Kyukyakushu. This is going to be a bit of a longer talk than has been the case over the last couple of uh, topics because um, the poems on pinks are a really good example of how the poets used alternate and earlier literary contexts, poetic and other, in order to add extra layers of meanings to the poems which, which they actually composed. So they were using intertextuality in quite a significant way, and so in order for you to be able to understand them, um, you, in order for anyone to be able to understand them, um, or get the most uh, benefit from that experience, it's important to understand that literary context and be aware of those earlier works first. The plants themselves were also um, as quite rich for as a resource for wordplay. So I think I'll start off by talking about those first. Then I'll um, outline the literary context which the poets in Aikyu Hyakusho are using as resources. And then I'll talk a little bit about the poems themselves. So to start off with then, um, pinks themselves, the plants. Well, um, pinks, the, lat the Latin name for the plant is Diantha superbus have two different names um, in classical Japanese and indeed modern Japanese as these names are still used. So Tokonatsu and Nadeshiko, both of which refer to the, the plant. Um, Nadeshiko um, can be divided into two different sorts and that reflects two different sorts of um, pink. Um, Yamato Nadeshiko, a Japanese pink, and Kara Nadeshiko, a China pink. And these are slightly different versions of the uh, um, breeds of the of the plant the pink. Um, if you want to take a look at some pictures I'm sure you can put those words and names into Google and uh, find images of them to see what they actually look like. Now both of these uh, names for the plant, Tokonatsu and Nadeshiko, were rich resources for wordplay and evocation because of various different aspects of homophony um, associated with them. Toko is homophonous with the word for bed, um, Natsu, summer, and Naderu, nadeshiko means to, naderu um, is to caress or stroke, ko is a child. So you can already see that uh, using these words um, in a poem would be easy, make it easy for the poet to create various different types of double meanings and so forth. So, um, with that little bit of groundwork laid, let's actually think about the literary context which I mentioned earlier. And to do that, I'm going to have to um, start with this poem, which is from Kokinshu. So, topic unknown. Yamagatsu no kakio no haeru ao tsuzura. Hito wa kure domo kotoju demo nashi. The mountain folks, fences are trailed with moon seed. People come, yet there is no word for me. Now, this poem obviously isn't actually about pinks at all, it's about an entirely different plant, um, tsuzura. Uh, but various different images and ideas are set up in it. So Yamagatsu no, mountain folks, people who live um, making their lives as woodcutters or charcoal burners on, on mountainsides, is an image of crudity, of lower classness. Um, obviously, as they came from this kind of class there, fences would be rough and crude affairs. Um, but the other key image from this poem is of loneliness. People come and yet there is no word for me. So the speaker of the poem is watching life go by um, and wondering when they're going to be able to join in um, society and see what's going on. Now, this poem is used as a source by Murasaki Shikibu in a section from the tale of Genji, Genji Monogatari. Um, now, this section appears in the second chapter of the work, Hahakigi, um, and the Overall title which is given to the scene in which it appears is Amayo no Shina Sadame, the rainy night discussion of the types of women. Now this is a slightly drunken, perhaps one might say, discussion between um, Genji, um, the protagonist of the novel, and a number of his friends about the um, different types of women that there are and how whether it's worth having relationships with women of other different classes from their own. It's an extremely famous passage from the novel um, and has been analysed endlessly. Um, and the phrase Amayo no Shina Sadame is so well known 
that uh, it's one of the key suggestions um, which Google will come up with in Japanese if you start typing it in. And even if you are using your input method editor um, to type, convert text into Japanese, then it's one of the first suggestions which the input method editor will uh, suggest as well. Now the discussion itself goes on for quite a while and has quite a number of different participants. But the key section we're going to talk about here is um, a tale related by Tono Chujo, um, who is Genji's uh, best friend. Um, his name, name as such, means head chamberlain, middle captain, about a relationship he has had with um, a lady from the lower classes. Now, the name by which this lady is known in the novel is Yugao, although actually in the Ameo no Shina Sadame, she remains nameless. Yugao is a name she picks up later. So, um, Tono Chujo relates a story of having had a relationship with this lady from um, the lower ranks of the nobility who has no powerful family backing and is um, basically alone in the world. Um, he's fond enough of her and spends enough time with her that she conceives a child um, and bears him a daughter. But being something of a, uh, an untrustworthy young man, he doesn't spend as much time with her as he perhaps he should. Um, even so, his wife's family, his principal wife, um, his family, um, doesn't approve of the relationship and begins to threaten the young lady um, and her daughter. Um, and Chono Chujo has not visited her for some time. These threats from powerful, um, a powerful noble family are coming in. And so obviously you can understand that Yugao becomes desperate. Um, desperate to get some kind of recognition for her daughter, some kind of protection for her daughter and herself. So um, at the end of her tether, she writes to Ono Chujo a letter containing this poem. Yamagatsu no kaki o aru tomo, ori ori ni aware wa kake o nadeshiko no tsuyu. The mountain folk's fences are crude, yet once in a while, show some pity for the dewdrops on the pink. Now, as you can obviously tell from this poem, it's based on the earlier one from Kokinshu. And Yugao has skillfully picked up some of the elements um, from that poem and added her own to make it uh, a work of her own. So Yamagatsu no, um, kak, uh, no Kakiyo, um, the image of crudity, lower classness, that refers to her own sexual background. Um, Nadeshiko no Tsuyu, the dewdrops on the pink, are the tears that she herself, as the mother, is shedding for her daughter, the Nadeshiko, the little child. Okay. So it's a plea to Tono Chujo to come and show some attention and offer some protection to her and her daughter. Now, um, always one to be moved by a good poem, um, Tono Chujo then does go and see her and they have a discussion and you can imagine how it might be. Yugao would essentially be pleading for him to um, offer some assistance and help to her and her daughter. Um, as part of their discussion though, Tono Chujo recites this poem. Between the blend of blossoming hues there is no telling, and yet, and yet, to the bedded pink here nothing can compare. So this is actually a slightly, I think a slightly cruel poem, in that um, the blend of blossoming hues are the beauty of mother and daughter, he's saying. So there's no real difference between you, you're both beautiful, he says. Um, and yet, to the bedded pink, tokonatsu, um, to you, um, the mother, nothing can compare. So you are indeed the best, you are more beautiful. Um, and there's a subtle implication that he's not that interested in her daughter himself, he's in only interested in her. Um, and the conversation continues, and he makes then, in the course of the com conversation, a reference to another poem. Um, which sort of reinforces this sense to some extent. extent. And this is the, the poem he refers to simply by re reciting the first line. So, when a servant was sent over from a neighbouring house with a request for some plowing pinks, he was reluctant and composing this poem sent it back. Not even dust may touch them, I feel, since they bloomed where my love and I bed down on pink coverlets of flowers. So, again, there's a, a bit of an erotic charge there from um, Mitsune's poem. Um, with the word of bed, with reference to bedding, toko, na, toko there, uh, and the reference to 
Imo, uh, my darling girl, a girl who I love. Now, Yugao, obviously being uh, an intelligent young woman, picks up on this reference and then uses it in her poem, the final poem in the sequence here. Uchihara o sode no tsuyukeki, toko natsu ni arashi fukiso o akimoki ni keri. Swept clean, my sleeves are still drenched with dew. Upon the pink, a storm wind blew and brought autumn with it. Now, how does she refer to the previous poem by Mitsune? Well, the, if you remember the first line of that poem, I mentioned chidi, dust. And what do you do with dust? You sweep it away. So she's um, using sort of word association with her use of, by the choose choice of the first line in her poem. Um, so what she's saying here, while my sleeves are still drenched with dew, I'm still desperately upset. I'm crying, I'm weeping. Um, as a result of the storm wind, the threats from your wife's family, um, which have been made against me and my daughter. Now, that brings this little section to a close, and unfortunately, her pleas to Tono Chujo aren't successful. He loses interest in her again, um, and in the face of more threats, she runs away and hides herself, so she can't, he can't find him, her rather, and his wife's family can't find her either. Now, readers of, um, sorry, the poets composing the Eki Hakushu poems would have been very well aware of this sequence of poems and the, co the literary context which it's, in which they were set. They would also have been well aware that Yugao's story doesn't end happily. She is the first real tragic heroine of um, the tale of Genji, in that um, the house she chooses to conceal herself in is next to the house of Genji's wet nurse. And when he goes to pay a, a, her a visit, um, when his witness is ill. Um, Yugao catches a glimpse of him out of the windows of her house and can't resist sending him a coquettish poem. He's intrigued by this um, and they begin a relationship although he conceals his true identity from her. And in the end he spirits her away from her house to spend the night with her somewhere more private where she is killed by a vengeful spirit who is believed to be the spirit of the Lady Rokujo, one of Genji's other lovers. Now this leaves her daughter alone in the world, um, and uh, it's just a tragic story about which Genji feels extremely guilty. Um, and this leads him to actually never stop looking for um, Yugao's daughter, and in the end he does find her and brings her back to Kyoto. So there's a degree of happiness there, although he's at that point torn. Um, it's some 15 or 20 years later, um, between claiming her as a beautiful young woman for himself or finding her a good match. I mean, by this time, he's obviously far too old for her. Um, and in the end, she does find a good match. Um, so this is the context in which the, and the awareness with which the poets of Eki Hyakushu were composing their poems. Let's move on then to actually look at the poems themselves and we can see where, we'll be able to see, I hope, the um, redolence with which the poets use these uh, expressions and words um, and the knowledge which everyone would have had to add additional layers of meanings to their own poetry. So Akinaka starts off. Yamagatsu no kakiho nare domo adeshiko wa kawara no iru wo tsukushite zo saku. A mountain man's fence this is, yet the pinks in never changing hues do exhaust themselves in blooming. Well, this is clearly based on both the Kokinshu poem and y um, Yugao's first one as well. So we have the reference to the crudity of the fence, the crudity of the context in which the pinks tend to bloom, um, and an echo an echo of the beautiful girl um, hidden away, suffering and lonely. So even though, however beautiful she may be, she may be exhausted by this as well. La Kezane um, builds on this um, these images and these ideas too. Toko natsu no kore ni shiku hana nakari keri, magaki ni sakeru, yamato na deshiko. To a bedded bloom in summer, no blossom can compare. By the lattice fence has bloomed a perfect pink. Now he's there drawing on the images in Tono Chujo's poem, the second one, of the beauty of um, 
you got myself as described by Tono Chujo. But his has a slightly stronger, I think, erotic and more positive charge than Tono Chujo's one is. He's referring to only a single girl, um, a bedded bloom in summer, a, a girl with whom I have slept, a woman with whom I have slept. She's absolutely incomparable. Hidden away in some secret place, there is a perfect girl for me, the Yamato no Deshko. Toshiyori, on the other hand, um, ignores that particular literary context and goes his own way, um, as he was wont to do. Kesamo mapa izami ni yukam sayuri bani eda sashi kawasu yamato no deshiko. This morning once more, say, shall we go to gaze upon the lily leaves, stalks, all thrust among the perfect pinks? So, um, here I think Toshiyori is simply talking about the, the plants, of a, going on a little excursion to see a mixture, a riotous mixture of different summer plants um, all growing together somewhere. Um, one can imagine where will this excursion go to? Will it be to the Imperial Palace? Will it be out to the country? Where might it be to see these beautiful plants? Tokonatsu no hanasaku yano ni ika ni shite fushiyoki take o mase ni yuwamashi. A pink is blooming at that house, but what am I to do? For the pliant bamboo stems would I twine into a fence. Tadafusa, on the other hand, returns to using the pink as a metaphor for a young girl as well. So, um, at some other house, some house which is crude and tucked away, um, a girl is coming into maturity. A young woman is coming into maturity, into sexual maturity. Um, what does the poet want to do? He wants to guard her and keep her for himself. Um, twine all the bamboo stems um, around to protect her and keep her secret and just for himself. Okay. Um, there's some other um, evocative language in here in the fushi, um, which means the knot of a bamboo, um, also means to lie down. So fushi yoki here echoes the idea of you know, someone who's good to sleep with, um, a girl who's good to sleep with. To lie down with. So there's a, a stronger sort of eroticism around this poem too. Obotsukana karana deshiko koko made ni tare kawatashite uoe hajime ke. How strange a China pink has come so far. Who is it made the journey and first planted it here? So Kanemasa doesn't rely on any of the, the, this particular these. Uh, previous literary context, and moves to talk about the China pink instead, with a, a meditation of how it could have come from this faraway land. Who is it made first made that journey all the way over the sea to the strange and alien land of China, um, and brought back um, this plant and planted it here? Tsuyuharai oruhito monaki furusato ni hitori no minuru tokonatsu no hana. To brush away the dewfall, is there no one here at all? In this ancient estate, do I sleep alone, a summer bedded pink? Well, Higo, Lady Higo, um, returns to the image of the flower as a young girl, although she associates it um, with herself in this case. What is this lady in question doing when she's reciting her poem? She's weeping. She's weeping because she's all alone in her tumble-down estate. Um, the implication, probably, of Hitori no Minuru, do I sleep alone, is that she has been visited by a lover before, but he's now losing interest in her, so she's happened to sleep alone. Um, frustrated um, with longing and loneliness um, in her bed, um, and weeping for the fact that he hasn't come. Yosouru mo nao natsu kashimi miru goto ni aware tsukusenu na desuko no hana. Their array is still so dear. Every time I see them, I am moved beyond all measure, the pinks in flower. Well, Daishin, I think here is again talking simply about the plants, how beautiful they are and how moving they are. Um, with perhaps a slight echo of watching a crop of uh, little children um, enjoying themselves and seeing them um, coming out into play or something like that might be nice too. It's a nice image. Okay, well, I hope that... Uh, this little talk has given you some ideas about how um, Japanese poets used literary context to add, add senses to their poems, and this gives you a better understanding of how the Pink's poems actually should be understood and interpreted. Um, see you next time. <laughs>